Welcome back, everybody. This is the Prepared Mindset Podcast. I'm your host, Austin. Thanks for joining us this week. We got another awesome episode for all of you guys. Josh and I are going to sit down. We're going to get into, uh, you know, something that's probably fairly relevant this week, just talking about our culture, uh, our, our community, the growth that we're experiencing right now, whether we realize it or not. Uh, Things are getting weird out there in the world, and the people around us, whether we realize it or not, are probably paying more attention than we would like to give them credit for. And because of this, we're seeing increased attendance at things like gun shows. We're seeing increased purchases, right? There's the metrics and the data from all of the lockdowns in the last three years, three and a half years to support that people are are starting to wake up, people are starting to pay attention, and people are more concerned than probably uh, at any time in recent memory for their security, their safety, their well-being, and they're starting to ask the questions, right? Some of the questions that many of us have been asking for a long time, what if? What's going to happen if this happens? What are we going to do if that happens? And as a result of that, we're starting to see some people step into our space, our community. Uh, They're starting to immerse themselves in our culture. And it's going to lead potentially right to some very interesting, what I'll say are growing pains, uh, or, or at the very least, probably some unique encounters for many of us as we have friends and family, coworkers, uh, acquaintances, right, who want to ask us questions, who want to get involved with this, who want to know if they're doing the right things or what, you know, maybe it's maybe it's as simple as what's the least amount of work I can do to get by without having to worry about X, Y, Z, or, you know, casually just picking your brain to at some point later uh, or immediately thereafter, who knows, right, decide that, hey, this really isn't for me and I'm just going to take my chances and assume that nothing bad is going to happen. Uh, as we all know, if you aren't prepared, you're probably going to have a pretty bad time when things happen. And it doesn't have to be anything catastrophic. It can be little things, but there's a quote that I remember seeing in a, I guess it's an old movie and probably a pretty bad one at that is Under Siege 2 with Steven Seagal. And uh, there's a quote from that movie that is, I, I, and I might be a little bit off on this, but it's chance favors the prepared mind. And, you know, as we think about catastrophes and we think about what what all of us are ultimately preparing for planning for a lot of it is a lot of it is good fun right we just enjoy training we enjoy learning we we like doing this but ultimately it does serve a greater purpose which is that if something should happen something that may potentially threaten our well-being and our livelihoods uh our, our families and our safety and our security right we are going to be able to react and respond in a way that's going to hopefully, right, preserve those things and protect our interests. Uh, so Josh and I are going to get into all of that stuff. Should be a pretty cool discussion. I think you guys are really going to enjoy it. Uh, before I get on over to our chat this week, <clears throat> as always, we are a sponsored podcast here at Prepared Mindset. We're super blessed, very fortunate to work with some awesome partners in the industry. I want to tell you guys about them. And we also want to say hello and thank you to a new sponsor uh, that's a new supporter of the channel here, uh, or the I should say the podcast here, supporter of the Prepared Mindset. And that is a big thank you to the team over at Lead and Steel. Guys, we had a mod on the podcast probably about a year ago now, honestly, when they had launched their LP1 rifle optic, which really turned a lot of heads. It was a very unique offering. It was It's always different and exciting to see a new offering in the optic space because a lot of times these smaller companies, as they pop up, right, they aren't always able to make a dent. They're not always able to make an impact. Lead and steel certainly was for a variety of reasons, and it's a great optic. They sent it out to Josh and I to play with and to test, and so far we have absolutely loved the LP1. It's a little bit heavier than an EOTech, but the reticle crispness, the overall construction, the durability, the mount, all of it is absolutely top-notch. I was very, very impressed from the moment I picked it up. And they also sent us out their PB3 or their Pandora pistol optic. And right now, you know, everybody is out there ranting and raving about the enclosed emitter optics. The PB3, in my opinion, is probably one of the best options on the market. I've been playing with Hollow Suns, I've played with Swamp Fox, Trigicon, and I've not shot the Acro, but I will say the PB3 really, really stands out to me for being a much larger optic window, very robust construction. There's a lot of really positive reviews out there. You guys need to check all of their stuff out, and a huge thanks to them for their support. Head on over to leadandsteel.co 
You guys can look at all their great optic selections as well as their firearm options too. I uh, also have to say thank you to our, our sponsors who've been with us, uh, who've been making this podcast possible as we've been rolling on and uh, need to say thank you to the team over at Custom Night Vision. Guys, as we talk about this this stuff today, right, our culture, our preparedness, our overall planning, you can't really have an honest conversation these days without getting into night vision. A lot of people want to say, you don't need it. It's something extra. It's something for rich people. It's fantasy band camp. You're really never going to need night vision. And honestly, you couldn't be further from the truth. You can head over to customnightvision.com. See what it's all about. If you're still on the fence about committing the funds, reach out to the team at Custom. They have a great insight chat function. You can have a conversation. You can ask questions. You can pick their brains. Hey, am I really going to lose out on performance with a budget option versus a more expensive option? Hey, am I really going to regret this going with green versus white and all the different options that are out there? The team at Custom is there to make sure they answer all of your questions and give you a completely transparent purchasing experience. So whether you're you're saving up for a couple of months or maybe even a couple of years now to get your very first optic and you're looking at a PVS 14 or maybe one of the Tonto options from Nocturne, right? Or if you're looking to get into binos, right? DTNVSs, RNVGs, all that good stuff. 1431 Mark IIs like they sent me. The, they have all of this stuff in stock, you guys, and there's actually images of the tube. So before you go ahead and you got to commit that hard-earned cash to go get into the night vision game, you can actually see a picture of what your tube's going to look like. You can know what you're going to get before you commit, and it's absolutely awesome. Not every company out there does that, but custom goes the extra mile for you guys. And if you've already got the night vision, that's amazing. That's awesome. They want to make sure you're completely set up. That's why they also stock and carry helmets from companies like Team Wendy and OpsCore. They carry lasers and lights. They carry all the good accessories you guys are going to need, mounts and more. Go on over to customnightvision.com. Check it out for yourselves today and go pick up some gear. <clears throat> Now, also have to say thank you to HRT Tactical Gear. You guys, we've been running HRT for, oh man, uh, eight months, nine months now. I've been running their LBAC carrier and uh, checked out their ARC belt. And now Josh has a full setup. He's been running on the range and he can't stop raving about the ARC belt, how lightweight it is, how much you just. It, you just you forget that the belt is there. It's extremely lightweight and extremely rigid, utilizing the Tigris material, space age technology, guys. The future is now, and I gotta say the the team over at HRT, they are crushing it with the Tigris. The Elback carrier that we're both running utilizes it for their cummerbund. Certainly not the only company out in the market to do that, but I think probably one of the better companies on the market with how they're utilizing that material. It's absolutely great. Very lightweight, very rigid, amazing solutions. You guys cannot recommend the gear from HRT enough to all of you. You can head on over to hrttacticalgear.com. Check it out for yourselves. Pick something up. Make sure you are well equipped with some quality gear from HRT. And finally here, I need to say thank you to 100 Concepts. Guys, 100 Concepts is crushing it, all right? They're scope caps, they're, they're light caps. Great, great solutions for all of us. If you're running a white light, if you're running any kind of scope, heck, if you're running a red dot, they have their line of hex caps, and they're getting ready to drop their EOTech hex cap as well. So really, virtually any optic that you have out there on the market uses glass, which means you have a potential for a glare and a reflection. And that means that you need to go on over to 100concepts.com. Check out the great products the guys have put together for you. And at the time of this recording, they're actually doing a pretty outstanding sale for hitting 50,000 subscribers on Instagram. They want to say thank you and show you guys how grateful they are. You can go check out the website. Again, it's 100concepts.com. Pick up some pack scrim or some helmet scrim, some scope caps, some light caps, and support an outstanding company whose motto is do good, be dangerous, and live free. One more time, guys. It's 100concepts.com. So big shout out to all those companies. They're absolutely top notch. And if you haven't checked them out, I implore you to go check out what they got for you guys. Uh, great solutions, great products, all of them. And we've had almost all of them on the podcast at one point or another here. So, uh, you know, big, big thanks to all of them. Uh, but like I said, our discussion this week, uh, you know, Josh and I getting into probably something that I'm sure some of you guys have noticed. Uh, we're going to talk about, you know, the community. We're going to talk about kind of opening our doors, what the impact could potentially look like. Maybe, you know, share some experiences. I know I've had people that have reached out to me recently 
uh, a lot more than what they did when I started the podcast when we were at the very beginning of the lockdown. And definitely, you know, more people that have talked to me in the last few years than even before that, when people just casually knew that I, uh, you know, was was training and shooting and learning and doing all of these things. So the world's changing around us constantly. It's something we need to pay attention to. Josh and I are going to dive on into it and cut it on up. So without any further hangups, here we go. God damn. <laughs> Dude, is it loud? It's loud. That was louder than last time, I swear. Yeah, it might be a thing. <laughs> Sorry. Not really. So I sent you, well, I guess I sent you that article um, yep. and it kind of is what triggered my thought to talk about this because it, it I mean, it's one of those things and maybe it, it really illustrates it that uh, I just came upon this, but I don't think people kind of notice, or maybe you do, like we, we notice small things in passing, but they're all like real big indicators that our community I guess, right? Culture, community, I'll say community is, is growing, uh, in ways that we don't necessarily always acknowledge, Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of like people that are, and it starts with just, I would say probably like basic concern and basic, like questioning of what's going to happen, you know, uncertainty. Well, when we look at what everything that happened four years ago, right? Like, okay you know, it kind of opened eyes as it, it's a possibility. Um, did you get a bunch, like when that was all going down, I know you were, you were living out of the, the mitten. Did you get a bunch of people that were like asking you questions, concerned? I mean, I know you were a bit younger then, but. Yeah, I wasn't as open besides everybody that I knew, knew I was away in the military. I wasn't, I've gotten more questions more recently than I have ever before, just cause I'm a little more open to, that I like to train and shoot and all that stuff. Yeah. And um, during the, during all of the stuff four years ago was more, everybody was just cooped up and trying to, it, it felt like in a private conversation, it was almost like if you were talking to each other, it was sort of to escape everything that was going on. I don't, mm-hmm. there's a little drama in my family group chat at one point about, uh, Oh boy. You know, the, what was, what it? was, was going it on in some of the cities and like how, oh, the, you know, the National Guard and military was getting involved. And I don't know. It was, it's, I was so young at the time. It did feels you, like forever did you ago, have, but it was only a few years ago, too. Did you have those family members that were uh, like super in support of what was going on? Oh, yeah. I would have had family, close family members that were taking part in the riots if it was our town. 100%. Really? Oh, yeah. No, now they wouldn't have called them that, but no, it's a, it's a peaceful protest. Yeah. <clears throat> so um, it, you know it depends it destroys the people's livelihoods but yeah. i dig it it, it, dep- it i don't like even talking about it because i've changed since then and the, some of the family members you know that uh probably would have done that or felt that way at the time have also we've all changed it's been a few years everybody's grown up a little bit um so i, I don't like going into it too much just because it's i don't know i like moving on and i don't like to hold grudges like that either I, I said think some dumb shit at the time too. That I mean, I don't, I don't think it's a <laughs> grudge. I mean, but it, it is. It's, I, I think <clears throat> it, it's one of those things that like, it, it's a uh, eye opening, you know, because yeah. you would. I think many of us have, you know, just assumptions about friends, family, whatever that like. Yeah, they would never do that. That per, I, I don't have anything to worry about. And then yeah, the, the window of opportunity suddenly arises. Like people, people, they may surprise you. Uh, mm-hmm. And that's it does not necessarily to say that it's like only your family are the ones you have to worry about because right. really like family's family. And unless you do some really effed up shit to them, uh, you probably don't have to worry as much about that, which like yeah. fun story. I had a friend send me an article yesterday <laughs> because a girl that we went through. So this friend of mine, we went all through school together, right? Elementary, middle school, high school together. Mm-hmm. I have known her since I was four years old. She sent me an article that another girl who we had also gone through all of school with, like she was batshit crazy. We were like, Oh, you're like a theater kid. Aren't you? You're, you're all, you're like really <laughs> weird. This girl who apparently she was like living with her cousin. Her says roommate. the band kid, by the way, just would like yeah. to know the band uh-huh. kid just shit on the theater kid. But, but the band kid isn't in the news for <laughs> stabbing their fucking roommate slash oh, cousin. God. So, yeah. <laughs> okay, not, okay. None of the band people I know are being charged with attempted murder. <laughs> 
<laughs> so Lord. That. And that's your family, right? And you stab your family in the chest. But at any rate, Jeez. you know, usually you don't have to uh <laughs> you don't have to uh worry about about your family. Um, but but it does it does kind of go to, po- to illustrate the point that you shouldn't necessarily take anything for granted or for certain until you're in that moment making that decision. But it is and it is also to say that from a larger perspective that things are changing, you know, times are changing. And if you're if you're somebody who's I mean, things like how many people looking back at, you know, four years ago have their living situation, their their family situations completely changed. If you lost a parent, if you gained a pet shit, how many people sat home, did nothing but make babies for four years? You went from zero to three. <laughs> I mean, you went from three. zero to yeah three yeah i mean by the way that's something that was your wife and i were going to tell you about this uh no uh oh dear god (laughs) uh but i mean like think things are drastically different now for everyone and you start to see people i think get that that level of interest and it's maybe it's driven by concern um i mean in in my experience i that's the way it starts it's always like i'm thinking about buying a firearm because I'm worried something might happen, Mm -hmm. you know? And my response is always one of like two things, maybe three things, which is like, okay, cool. Uh, What are you thinking about getting? And it's immediately then followed up by, all right, are you going to carry this? Are you you planning to carry this? Because then that changes, you know, the context of, of question one, but, but then also, okay, are you going to, are you going to go shoot this thing? Are you going to practice with it? Are you going to go learn how to, I, I try not to, and this is the weird part too, because you don't want to come across as like too tinfoil with people, um, I guess is the phrase, right? But I try, I try not to use the word train, not right off the gate. I'm like, are you going to go practice? practice. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> practice sounds more approachable and more like, you know, air quotes, more, more normal. Yeah. And if people are more receptive to that concept of going to practice with their, uh, just like you, know, you grew up, a little you more it's a little more gentlemanly yeah you go you practiced your clarinet growing up right you're gonna go practice your gun <laughs> uh, but i mean that's yeah i i think that's i think that that kind of a soft intro to the community is not necessarily always a bad thing either no uh it, it's the full-on um the full-on like complete exposure all at once i think is a terrible way to try and introduce people to the concepts for almost every hobby if you think about it unless you just got like a wad of money burning a hole in your pocket and you're like give me all of it you know i mean right it's not but i'm not yeah like i get into kit and you know we both get into kit and attachments and whatever if i go past a flashlight explaining to somebody new that's almost always just like ah too too much too much at once and i start god you know as much as I'd love to start talking about play carriers and armor, it's like, let's just talk about the one step <laughs> having more than one magazine. <laughs> I was gonna, <laughs> or, I was gonna bring uh, that up. I was gonna bring that yeah. one up because guys think that no, I started actually, talking about grip angle and shit on an on a standard A two grip versus a BCM versus like yeah, this is like, I get too too, too, too much too soon. It. Yeah, you see their their eyes start to glaze over, and you just know that you've yeah. lost. And exactly, people think that, and people do. I mean, and. It, there's a lot that goes into it, but people think that some of these firearms come with everything that you need. And, and the truth is, I mean, we have certain firearms companies or handgun companies that don't even, they don't even sell with more than two magazines. You know, no, it doesn't come with a holster. No, it doesn't come with a light. No, it doesn't come with a third, you know, you're seeing uh, the daggers come now with a red dot and a flashlight bundled together though. I think that's pretty cool that PSA and some companies you'll start to see, or a gun, some gun shops will do that. Well, they'll have, mm-hmm. you see a lot of hollow suns in stock at gun stores just cause you know, the, it's what they can afford to sell and they're great. Obviously we know this, but like yeah. I'll see them like depending on the gun store, they'll install the hollow sun dots on the gun for, onto a factory MOS or something and sell it as a bundle. The 365 SIGs doing that with their um, Romeo dots. I think it, but you're right. It's never you're never going to get a full. You can get the packages that come with a holster, but it's almost always a holster that you're going to want to replace and get something. Better. Oh yeah, it's usually it's usually complete garbage. Um, I think they're I think uh, Canic is now starting to partner with a a, a Kydex holster company that might be decent. Yeah, it might be. T Rex is making those iron side holsters too, aren't they? For oh, that's right. PSA. Uh, that's like I don't know for sure. Maybe I, I yeah. you could probably right. 
Uh, so, but yeah. I mean, people assume that like, hey, when I buy a rifle, it's going to come with a sling, or I only need more magazines. Sights anymore? Most not, rifles now don't even come with sights like yeah. they used to because well, the whole front sight post thing. Is, yeah, but uh, now updated, it's, so it's uh, and and that's the other thing. People buy the rifle and they go, okay, well, I should be at least good to go. I don't need anything fancy, and yeah. it's like you need. You need a sighting apparatus, whether that's, yeah. you know, uh, plastic MBUS sights or whatever, or you hey, know, it works. red dot, you know, something yeah. standard. Um, the beautiful and, thing about the platform, too, is it's so, you can you can make changes later on, like, just get them started, and you can always add more to it once, if there's an interest there. Hopefully, they want to continue to put into it, but a lot of people will just maybe zero it with you and then keep it under their bed. And I think um, that the the slow and steady approach like we were saying is definitely like once you get to that point in the conversation is where we lose a lot of people um because you jump straight into like you should build it out just like i do because we want we want to recommend to our friends you know um mm -hmm. buy quality parts buy something good buy something effective or maybe they they ask they go like hey i want i want what you have and mm -hmm. then you know they shit their pants when they find out that your eotech and magnifier combo Cost I haven't done the math on what my Mark 18 now costs with everything on it after the suppressor and everything. I don't, I'm too afraid to think about it. And I don't yeah, even have a yeah. nice laser. Yeah. Um, when I sat down and did the math on my 11 and a half inch. Yeah. Yeah. There's Especially some after some of the changes you made. Um, yeah. There's, you didn't make a ton of changes. You didn't change the barrel or anything. But yeah, dude. Like, is this. I did. I did. They'll the see what we like as, you know, this is what I like. And they'll see that and it's overwhelming. But then you have to tell them, like, hey, this took me seven years to get to where it is now you know yeah um, well let and me just scroll through my photos and show you how i started and then show them my sport two mm -hmm. with an m lock four or an m m lock m lock wasn't even a thing yet the moe four end um and an m bus rear sight that's that's what i started with and uh you know just, well and just the 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 co understanding and explaining the concept that <clears throat> uh as, as a new shooter um or yeah, it doesn't have to be we don't have to confine it to shooting but you know we're talking about rifles. Hey, that, that that PSA that you bought, whether it's a saber or not, or that arrow that you bought, nothing about that gun is going to be worth upgrading immediately with your with your current skill set. Like you need to go out and just shoot it. It's mm -hmm. upgrading to a more accurate barrel is only going to help you to a fraction of a you know a fraction of a percent. You know what I mean? It, or yeah. uh, going from you know, a vortex, uh, crossfire two red dot up to an aim point T two with your skill level is only going to help you, you know, a, a minimal amount. Like, yes, it's going to be more durable. Uh, the battery life may be better. There's a lot of things you could say there, but if you're just looking at raw measurables, the actual performance, yeah, between that specific example, I would say almost nothing is gained yeah. for $900. So there's definitely As other places that that could go. Well, and as you're trying to ease people into this, right, so that the sticker shock is definitely the hugest part. And it, some people, it takes them, you know, six weeks to get over it. Some people take six years. Some people, yeah. go their, you know, their whole uh, hobby life. Yeah. You know, uh, <laughs> and don't ever get over that. They're like, I just want the cheapest thing I can get. I like my shit cheap. I'm like, okay. Lucky for them, we live in the best time to get a cheap gun right now. <clears throat> yeah, this really is the, the renaissance of the... A cheap gun ten years ago was was total dog shit. Now you can get a PSA for less than four hundred bucks, and uh, that thing will stress. I mean, Grand Thumb's new video, that thing was shot hard for five thousand rounds. Mm -hmm. um, to most, for most people, that's going to be totally adequate. And then also, if you end up shooting it out after that much or whatever, just put a BCM upper on it or something else. Keep the lower. Yep. By but, that time, um, uh, what it, you know, you're going to be able to, by that time you're going to be able to save more money and set it aside. I mean, most of us are, it's going to take a lot of like casual people are, are not oh, going yeah. to put 5,000 rounds through a rifle. No, I quick. was just thinking about yesterday. Um, I don't know what my current round count is on most of my stuff. I've been training hard training. I training is such a, I say it too much, but like I've been shooting, I've, I said in our chat earlier, today, I've been focusing more on my shooting ability for the last year and a half and my round counts, the highest it's ever been. Um, and I'm hoping to get, especially pistol focused, the highest it's ever been this year, like really put time into that. But like, mm -hmm. I was thinking about my first AR build. I was like, by the time I sold my sport two, after five years, it maybe had, it definitely had less than 500 rounds through it. I never yeah. really trained with that gun. You know, that was what I sold to sort of upgrade to some nicer things, which is what I shoot now. Um, but like the casual, 
that you say plinking or whatever. I only shot it a couple of times, maybe 250, 300 rounds were put through that thing over years. Um, now we obviously will recommend that guys do more than that. It, the culture has changed and the, you know, um, especially just my brother alone shooting with me for the last year and a half has put more rounds through with me than I did when I first started out. You well, know? And, and there's also a whole lot to be said, I think, and gained uh, in some of the, I'll say like ancillary skills and practices, you know, I mean, um, <clears throat> a lot of people want, you know, I can't afford to go shooting, so I don't want to invest in these things. And uh, yeah. you, you can get a whole hell, hell of a lot done out of dry practice. Oh, hundred percent. I, I think that the, cause people will see what other guys are doing on the range and immediately get intimidated and not understand that the, the greater portion of that is administrative skills that can be practiced with absolutely no ammo. Things yeah. like the proper process for executing a reload uh, or racking the gun or, or, or sorry, charging the gun or mm -hmm. transitioning from a rifle to a hand. I mean, whatever, right? Almost uh, all of it. I would say pretty much all of it. Yeah. And it doesn't, yeah. it doesn't have to be, uh, it doesn't have to be an ultra expensive endeavor right up front. So I think that's what it turns a lot of people away, at least in the firearms component, because we are, and this is, this is a problem I think the entire outdoor industry has is like we, it, it, the, the industry is really good at convincing folks that they need something else. It could be anything. Yeah you know, clothing. Oh, look like, or that, what's that? Oh, what's that super fucking cringy holster that like shoves down your pants? Like the big old leather. Oh, the one that goes all the way down. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, it's I... as silent as the steps of a Navy seal, which is literally the line they used from their YouTube commercial. Oh my God. Yeah. I forgot that... about those. I, you, every now and then they, like the ads will reappear. I'm like, I haven't seen this in like three years. This company's still going. That's crazy. It's a terrible design. It's a terrible holster. No one should run it. I'm, I'm fairly convinced. I think I've seen a video of a guy using it and trying to be fast with it. And the gun like just was ejected like a, like an F-15 pilot. seat so just ejected out of his pants when he threw it up. Well, that's the thing is that, yeah. you, like I said, the industry is good at marketing that kind of stuff. And there are people who will buy into that because it's, it's, it's comfortable or more comfortable than, than Kydex. You know, he, like, and that's the thing too. Like I've had, a, I have some friends that carry, uh, I got one friend in particular, she carries a Glock 26. Which I mean, it's not the most ideal platform for carry, but I mean, it it, it can take Glock 17 mags. Um, yeah, I almost you know, I, was thinking I, of buying I, one of those recently again. Every yeah, every yeah. couple of years, I go through this thing like, what if I just had a Glock 26? This is that side gun that can, I put a little safe here, have one downstairs in the safe or something. That's a cool little gun. I just keep putting off getting one. Well, when you get it, maybe you can just throw it in a nice little ankle holster too. <laughs> It's so it's so blocky though. You'd have to do it with like oh, a little LCP or something tiny and thin to put on an ankle. Even a little or, revolver, I'd rather have as an ankle gun. But you'll never see me with an ankle gun. Well, and that's hot take. That... Guys with ankle guns would be better served having ankle med kits. Yeah, I would agree with that. Because I almost I would confidently say most guys that carry an ankle gun have no medical on them. Oh no, I, I yeah, I would agree with that. I, I would I would definitely tend to agree with that because uh, they carry the gun as a just in case policy, you know, or like an insurance policy without any additional. Yeah. And that's maybe, and maybe that's one of the things that we're seeing uh, as a, as a positive uh, from the, the growth and development of just general media in the mm -hmm. community. Like one thing that sticks out to me as one of those marketed solutions to people that uh, we don't really see or hear about anymore is like, these 380, these ultra tiny 380 pistols that were sold mm -hmm. as like the every person's pistol, like the Taurus Curve. Have you seen the Glock one? The 42, it's smaller than a 43. Yeah, dude. Yeah, the crazy. 42. Uh, not not an not a uh, exceptional exceptional solution. I mean, if you, I mean, I would I might consider one for like my mother because she's just very she's older, obviously, and so my mother in law carries. But it would also, I would arguably lean more towards like the the M and P Shield EZ because 100%. it's got a grip safety. It's easier to rack. Yes, it's a it's a. Oh no, I think it is a three eighty. I was gonna say it's a twenty two, but I think it's a three eighty. They have uh, they have one. Of, they they have a three eighty and a nine for sure. I don't I don't think they make a twenty two of it, but I could be wrong. I mean, but that's the kind of stuff we're finally moving away toward, like from those 
and a lot and a lot of guys will be upset when they say when I say this, but like we're finally moving away from like the Bursa Thunder and like these I don't even know what that is. Uh <laughs> it's like the Bursa Thunder is like a ripoff Kmart version of the Walther PPK. Yes. Like if you were to look them up and put them next to each other, they're they're pretty... Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yeah, I've seen those. Yeah. yeah, they were real popular for a couple of years there. Um, for just because it's like I actually have an uncle that has. They were like, two hundred dollars. Yeah, they were more affordable and they were small. My uncle has a Walther PPK. Yeah. He bought probably I don't know in the nineties or something. He bought just mm-hmm. to carry because it was small, and doesn't that never ended up carrying it because it's heavy and it doesn't shoot that well and you know, <clears throat> and that's. We're, we're now starting to see, a, I think, a more concerted push. And when people enter the the market or enter the community, they're they're going straight towards the... And it, this isn't to, like, support the killing off of small brands or, or whatever, but people are going towards better choices, in my mm-hmm. observations. You know, people are going to Glock. They're going to SIG, which I'm not personally a fan of SIG for some, you know, different reasons and things <laughs> their carry like, guns are great it's just the the 320 is the one that gets the hate no I mean, nobody's I mean, really gonna argue the 365 or the macros or xls no, those, are like, great. those are all the most popular right next to glock in in the country um yeah, the, yeah the, I mean, one thing i was the thinking is yeah oh yeah yeah the shields and and whatnot one thing i was just thinking like you're not really seeing the tiny guns in the hands of people that are actually more serious that are actually going to the range and practicing we'll say um yeah. you're, you're not seeing anything smaller than the 365 or the 43x anymore which is pretty cool to see oh, like, yeah. the only people i know that are still getting the tiniest guns like our buddies that have the the ruger lcp in 22 oh god i'm not even kidding they make yeah. that it's like this big i i'm holding a lego sized yeah, for guys listening, I can't see. I'm showing Austin a Lego size thing with my finger. It's this big, uh, and it shoots 22. It has like I don't know how many rounds. Um, got this for me and my wife. Oh boy. Okay. I I love those. Uh, I I yeah. think if you're, uh, you know, if you're buying something like that, I really do question what you're doing it for. And I also think the the, the notion, and maybe this is something, because we're gonna be taking the ladies out shooting in the very near yeah. future, here and probably get some content from it too. Be a good, it's, good little opportunity to do something when, different. When, when guys say that they're buying a firearm for them and their wife, or even mm-hmm. hey, oh, he I'm bought two. This. That's what I meant. I'm, oh God. <laughs> and that's that's part that's a bigger issue too, is people are like, oh, this is for my wife. So you automatically have to for whatever reason, right? You automatically apparently have to take a step down in your cartridge and caliber, uh, and also in your overall footprint. I think it's sexist. That's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. That's exactly what I was thinking. We shall make some picketed signs and go tell them. Amy five five six would have something to say about that with her forty cal full sized M and P. Yeah. Yeah. No, she crushes forty cal. Yeah. And uh, I I think, you know, if, if someone is actually a competent shooter and they've been shooting for a while and they want something that small, then more power to you if that's your decision. But I, if that's what gets you carrying and more self reliant yes. and all that, rock on. We're not just trying to shit on people. Um what I was trying to say is those small, I'm seeing those small, tiny, little stupid 22s that people are buying them, the people that don't shoot and the people that don't train or even you know, you're going to dry practice. You're going to know how not ideal that is. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of them are carrying them in purses. And in that case, I can fit a Glock 19 in a purse. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I mean, the or size 43 of X or anything yeah. bigger. Um, yeah. Or the, the cool little um, fanny pack that you saw me rocking that I take to the gym and that's I, don't know if I, use, I don't know if I would like use the word cool, but I mean, yeah, I'm I think there. it's cool. It's it, you can carry a, a full size or comp. It's a compact, like it'll carry a Glock, Glock 19 size gun yeah. and still have space for me to take the shit out of my pockets when I'm at the mm-hmm. gym. Cause I don't like putting my wallet and keys. I hate having shit in my pockets while I'm especially squatting and stuff. Um, yeah. So like it lets me carry everything on my chest or around my waist if I'm benching. Um, and I was, so like that, was that, and it has a good Kydex holster inside of it. It's not just this shitty little elastic sleeve that you saw for a few yeah. years. And, and I was one of those people who was super resistant, you know, cause I carried uh, basically all of last year and ba- well, from 2020 up through last year, for the most part, I carried a 43 X. I was super yeah. resistant <clears throat> to uh, carrying a 19 uh, because I wanted to have something that I could carry year round. 
right? Which I mm-hmm. never tried carrying the 19, but uh, you wanted something. Oh, well, I'll be able to carry the 43X all year round. So in the winter, in the summer, mm-hmm. everything, right? It, it was in my mind that that do all size that was just right. And and maybe there's something to that. There's certainly nothing wrong with carrying the 43X. However, not. if you make the right, I'll say if you make the, the right wardrobe choices, uh, it's not that big of a jump to go from a 43X to a 19. It's really not. Shoot the 19 a little bit better, you know, and if you're looking for those, those, that edge, right, that uh, advantage, why not? And I think that yeah. getting out with all this is people were buying those small micro compacts and stuff because they were convinced that they needed to eliminate their overall footprint. In actuality, uh, and I can say this confidently as somebody who start my first gun was an MP shield gen one mm-hmm. fucking hate shooting that thing. I still own it. I hate shooting. <laughs> can giant, you bring that this weekend? I can. Yeah. If I remember, I know I'm for sure bringing the, the Glocks and stuff, but yeah, yeah. Throw that in the bag as It'd well. It'd be cool to give, cause we're in the process of like, I've been giving my wife some ideas. She's finally turning yeah. in her CPL paperwork and I just want to like round the bases of like, she knows what my 19 feels like. That's the smallest pistol I have. Um, mm-hmm. That's been my year round carry for the last four years since I started yeah. uh, carrying. I just haven't, I'm mainly because I'm cheap, but I also just like keeping shit the same. So I, I train with a 19 or a full size 17 grip. Like they both feel pretty much exactly the same. So you're, and then you're, that's what I carry. So you're finally uh, allowing your wife to have a firearm. Is that no, she, I've been trying to see this is what we go back to <laughs> chilling out and not being too into it when you're trying to explain this shit or like yeah. get somebody into it. Cause if they're not going to be into it, they're not going to be into it. Yeah. Um, yeah. like so i'm just planting seeds a little bit but the 43x uh is one that's on my radar that i think she'll like because she likes the 19 except for how thick it is so that's exactly what the answer was was the 43x and the 48 just yeah. the same profile just making it thinner so yeah look at that and then also the shadow systems has like their compact version that's sort of like the 43x it takes proprietary yeah. mags but it's a little guccier she has expensive tastes so she, she was looking at getting a platypus which is that new 2011 and i'm like <laughs> if we if we win the lottery i'll get each of us a platypus how about that yeah um, i well but, I, that thing had some weird reliability things too from the one video i watched it's kind of an odd was that was sage it, dynamics i think it was yeah I say yeah, it's kind of an odd what, duck. What issue he's having? It ended with him saying he liked it, but there was something weird. I think it had to do with the mags that he was. He got those metal mags, thinking they would be better, and, and it actually were. liked the Glock mags more. Yeah, the uh, which, I was going to say it was kind of a as an as a pistol. It's kind of an odd duck, which by definition is what a platypus is. Hey, maybe that's yeah. why they did that. Yeah, that's the only 1911 style gun I would get because I don't want to buy any different magazines. One because I don't like mixing shit up, and I'm also cheap. And uh, I have a shit ton of Glock 17 mags and I'd like to keep it that way. So, yeah. And it's, you know, and, I say that when I'm talking about getting a 43 X for my wife, which is going to change all that, but whatever. That's no, all I mean, relatively speaking, I mean, you, the nice thing with Glock mags though, like actual Glock uh, OEM mags, so they're everywhere. Well, they're everywhere and they're affordable. Yeah. They really, they yeah, really... you're not looking at, oh, dude, have you seen the 320 mags are still crazy. It's like 60 bucks for their like one magazine when you see oh, bundles really? for regular glock mags i just saw i was looking at i'm looking at um putting a slide together so i'm looking at the oem like internals at yeah. different websites and almost every spare glock website has just like trade in or used glock 17 mags for like 12 bucks really yeah I mean, it, it, they're 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 really not yeah they're not that expensive new you can th- now here's the thing if you're really worried about capacity you could go with at least with that particular model you can get the shield arms mags and bump up to 15 yeah. so you're really looking at the same capacity but even without you're still looking at 11 rounds which is a far sight better than totally fine three you know or a five shot revolver or a six yeah five or six shot revolver in that size category yeah right. and 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 then hopefully and i think then the eventual goal if you're helping at least if, if you're helping someone through all this stuff right is that they eventually gain enough interest to move into the additional training and additional learning mm-hmm. uh phase and process uh I, I think and this is one of the things i really don't like and and you mentioned earlier it's with any hobby right you, you don't want to give somebody too much too quickly uh mm-hmm is that you will get these guys that are like, oh, you want to learn how to shoot and stuff. Yeah. 
okay, cool. Well, I'll tell you what. Me and my buddies are going rucking this weekend. Why don't you come with? And you go, what the fuck is rucking? Well, we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna go. We're gonna go. You know, hike for five miles while carrying you know seventy pounds on our backs. And it's like, no, I'm gonna fucking not do that with you. Uh, and I can <clears throat> again attest to this because I had a friend do that to me when I was like, I'd like to learn more. I'd like to do some more stuff. And the first answer was, let's go rucking. And it's like, dude, it's not everybody's thing up front. Yeah. You, you have to. And, and it's seriously, I think it's, it's stuff like that. that up until recently has maybe stunted the growth in the community a little bit. You know, you can't be so mm, I, closed off. I think it's closed off. Like maybe the, the right term for it. You, you just have to accept that some people come into it a little bit lukewarm and then yeah. you find something that you really like, whether it's like long distance shooting, help, maybe they do really like rucking and that's just their thing. Maybe they hate shooting, but they love carrying heavy shit on their back for no reason at all. And <laughs> like sick, dude, like I know there's those people out there that are just into it. I see people in my neighborhood like walking around. Uh, we had a girl at my local gym who I swear to God, five, three tops. 5'3 and like 140 pounds tops, who was putting on the most gigantic backpack I've ever seen. It actually <laughs> hasn't been that big, but maybe I'm just thinking it was that big because like size, the ratio between her and the backpack was so ridiculous. And she yep. put it on and was doing laps on the indoor track with it. I'm like, you know what? Good for you. You do look like you're going to fall over backwards from all of the weight strapped to your back. But you know what? I salute you. you you're doing good stuff there. It, it's yeah. not, yeah, you know, it doesn't have to be super firearm centric. Uh, I think, <clears throat> I, I think there should be at least some, you know, if somebody's really asking you to, you know, how I, I want to be prepared for whatever's going like, to come down. We're talking later. about, you're saying we're talking more about general preparedness instead of just, yeah. I mean, if, shooting. yeah, if, if someone, if someone were to, were to come up to, you know, and go, I, I'm really concerned about what's going to happen, you know, yeah. can you show me some shit, uh, it, firearms to me should at least be part of it. But mm -hmm. I certainly, if, if there's somebody who's like, a I don't know, conscientious objector to violence or something. There's, There's uh, still tons of stuff they can do. And, and some of it's not that intrusive to get into, you know, or uh, yeah. intimidating food, food, food storage and preparation. People and if they're not savvy with that. canning and shit, <clears throat> send them a link to my Patriot supply and get some prepackaged stuff. Yeah. I mean, tell them not to just buy MREs. That's the best thing you can do for somebody starting out in this space. Say, ignore MREs. Yeah. That's like what you <laughs> it's usually buy what you see. This is the most first thing people buy that aren't very yeah. important. You're like, these do not say shelf stable for more than a few years. And like, if you're going to be training and doing stuff out in the woods, it's a good one. Cause then it's, you don't have to boil anything like a mountain house. You don't have to heat up water. You can just eat them. Or yeah. use the little thing. Like they're nice for actual field training, but if you see a lot of preppers or guys that are trying to build up food storage long term, like MREs, if you're brand new, they're only good for like five years. When we're talking about other food storage, that's like twenty plus years of dehydrated well, and, stuff and, and packaged stuff. I was stuff. really surprised, uh, and this was a couple of years ago when I I was listening to a Fieldcraft podcast and it was uh Mike and Kevin talking about that exact thing, right? Guys will buy like yeah. a pallet of MREs or whatever, and they're like there you go. I got enough food for five years and they don't, mm. people don't realize that those MREs are like, I don't want to say built, but they're designed for very specific purposes. Like you said, like field yeah. training and stuff. It's not they, very high not, intensity physical. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, and you're having don't... one or two a day and your, your body, it's keeping your body going. That's literally they, it. But it's they don't nutritious. have, yeah, exactly. The nutrition is not there. It's not no. meant to be a long-term dietary solution. No. It's like a short-term solution. And I've also been told it's designed to make you not go to the bathroom, which can also it's be a tactical, it's a tactical purpose. Yeah. But I mean, yeah. So you're not shitting in the field all the time. <laughs> yeah. So you don't get blown up by a freaking artillery drone in Ukraine. While you're taking it in the hole. <laughs> I'm not going to be shitting. But that's the stuff people don't realize. They don't. They don't realize yeah. that like just going to you know Joe's Army Navy or whatever <clears throat> and picking expensive up expensive too. They have gotten a lot more. Expensive if you're getting a case of them for a weekend training event and you want to feed a bunch of guys, yeah, they're great. But then beyond that, nah. There's a. You, I would even say get a mountain house before because you can get that stuff and it's going to at least be dehydrated and last a lot longer. When your I mean, power runs out, you can still get gas in your stove. Then you can heat up water. 
that way. Yeah, or if you have a house, jet but... oil or or one of those like camping yeah. or something. There's a lot of different options that way. But yeah. I found that the food prepping way is a very uh, approachable. Yeah, uh, and it entry. makes it makes sense to people. You know, and a lot of Especially people. When we saw grocery stores empty out a few oh, years ago. Dude. Yeah. And it wasn't even, and the scary part too is just like, I mean, and I guess that probably, that shows you uh, where the, I guess the, the hive mind, like our community, not our community, pro- like what we're talking about here, but uh, the society here in the U.S. where priorities lie. Like we're, we're not a healthy society, right? No. Uh, I watch people carry out, you know, push or push out, I guess, carts full of Mountain Dew and Oreos and like, mm-hmm. uh, like frozen snacks. While canned yep. goods, canned goods stand stayed on. The, I don't know what it was like for you guys. I mean, I know you were, you were in when this was all going down. But I remember going to a, the day that I got sent home from work, going to the store with my wife, stopping on the way home, and like green beans, corn, canned mushrooms, yep. all that, every canned good you could imagine, just sat there. Instant potatoes sat there. Yeah, all, all that stuff. This got nice long shelf lives. Rice, right, just sits there. People are walking. Yeah. People. They were literally, they had emptied the uh, the meat section, so mm-hmm. all the chicken, all the bacon, completely gone, and not the, not even the frozen stuff. Just oh, we'll only be home for two weeks, so we're just gonna buy all the junk food up and eat like kings. And mm-hmm. then two weeks came and went, and everyone's going, "All right, where's the food?" Shit. Oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know what's really fucked up? I don't know if I talked about this on here. Uh, I have said that I was living in the barracks at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, when you live in the barracks, they take uh, three fifty at the time it was uh, out of your check every month, or maybe three hundred. That might have changed now that I've not been out of the barracks for a few years. But that was to go towards the dining facilities to feed you on base, so that you didn't have to yeah. pay for groceries. You would go eat at the the dining facility every meal, or had it open to you. Whether or not you went there, they'd still take it out every month. So it, it would make sense to instead of spend four hundred bucks on groceries for yourself just go eat at the dining facility for quotations free, even though they were taking money from your check every month. Right. The dining facility closed during all of COVID and we weren't getting fed, but they were still taking the money out. Oh, that's fucked. So our barracks was right next to the gas station. It's called the PX um, or the shop at super stupid military term. Um, the freaking freaking gas station food is what we were living on. We went to the store a couple of times, but it was like, Oh, there's nothing here. Um, so the gas station was making bank off of soldiers living in the, the six to 10 barracks buildings surrounding it for all the different units that were on my side of base. We were all getting breakfast sandwiches and frozen mi- deep dinners from That's the PX disgusting. every That's other day. That actually lost weird. the most amount of weight at that time, even though I was eating like that terrible diet just because it was for the money i wasn't eating lunch i'd do pt in the morning with my team and then uh have a breakfast sandwich and i think a freaking honey bunches of oats baby i love that stuff but every time i eat it now it makes me think of covid and i get upset but um i'd have a bowl of cereal a breakfast sandwich in the morning basically fast the whole day and then um my wife and i at the time were in the same barracks building so we basically just lived together (laughs) um and we would have dinner and it would be like a frozen pasta or something for myself and she'd get a frozen like Asian cuisine thing and we'd have that for dinner and watch whatever we think we were binging The Walking Dead at the time in 2020 during the lockdown The Walking Dead, The Patriot and Waco were all like the top <laughs> and Tiger King but like oh, it's yeah. funny those things like I just got dropped on Netflix at the time of the pandemic and everybody losing their minds so I don't get conspiracy or not but I think that was definitely like just trying to stir shit up but they dropped those those were like trend dropped on Netflix and then trending also but like that's what I did was they they took money for the defect that was closed and then spending all my money on cheap food pretty messed up huh and they it's so okay, off topic but I, I've never gotten a chance to actually rant about that at least not in a few years so I just unloaded all that as a, as I mean, a release so it, a little bit but that shows you like it can work but it's it certainly like it's you, you, you're planning and preparing for not having to do shit like that. Like I don't that's... even want to think about how much money I blew on that too, because it was the only way we could get food. At the same time, if you were married, everybody else was just on vacation at their homes, still getting paid. They didn't get the money taken out of their check for the food, but they also, you know, had to get food other ways for themselves, like everybody else did. But 
like we I mean, were it, in the barracks trapped in a dungeon what it felt like for however a month or two i will say else was just living it, it up at their houses it never felt on the civilian side during all of that i can honestly say it never felt as bad in that first year as it does right now because prices weren't yeah. up yet we didn't really feel the supply chain squeeze i mean some produce stuff like with the seasons and everything like <laughs> that, that kind of stuff was exacerbated but uh, we never really went uh or at least i didn't i didn't experience it uh not to so that that's not to say it, it didn't happen to other places but uh <clears throat> we didn't really uh, you feel the squeeze too badly but it it, it was different um and I know a lot of people really looked to, and it was a huge uproar online, right? Oh, you can't go buy seeds. You can't go do gardening stuff. They don't want you spending your money. Like Walmart was like calling the police on people for buying what they deemed, you know, non-essential. Um, and and even since, right, we, we've seen uh, large operations get raided by the FDA and stuff like that for, because they, they, you know, and there's a lot of conspiracy theory that goes into it, but all that, all of that to come back to the point of, if you have a garden, right, and you want to invest in your own preparedness and, uh, you know, food stores, all all that good shit, that's an, that's an easy way. Guys, all the time when I, I post stuff with my wife, less so lately, but uh, you know, that's a, oh, I wish I could get, I could get my I wish I could get my wife to do that with me. I wish I could get my wife to go to the range with me. I wish I could, and it's like, okay, well, have you started with anything else? Because for us, it started with things like making our own laundry detergent and learning how to, you know, eat healthier and like work out and go to the gym. Like we've been going, we've been going to the gym together since basically the beginning of the year. So we're yep. not 90 days in, she's already down like 20 pounds. Yeah. You know, overall being more healthy is a, is it's, but because it's not, because it's not going to the range, people don't <laughs> look at it with the same value. You just reminded me I was going to rant a little bit about this stupid bringing up the stupid rucking thing is like you're getting into it. Come on a ruck with me and the boys. First off, a lot of guys call it rucking when it's actually hiking. Rucking to me is an exercise that you do on flat ground. You're actually like trying to sweat and not carry more than just water and weight um, on your back. Anyways, I hear rucking and then there's you guys just like going up in hills in the middle of nowhere. I'm like you're hiking. Uh, anyways not that important but it's always been a pet peeve uh somebody's asking you hey I'm, I'm trying to get into preparedness whatnot um how can i get more involved cool come to the gym with me that's gonna be more beneficial for both of you yeah um, especially if you're already going to the gym it's gonna get that person stronger if you take somebody out on a ruck that doesn't know what the hell they're doing it means you probably don't know what the hell you're doing um that person's gonna get first like almost guaranteed to get broken off if you're with your boys that are all have been doing it for a while and this person's never done it before they're gonna have a terrible time they're probably gonna hurt themselves mm -hmm. and they're not gonna want to do it again after um and they're definitely not gonna want to hang out with you it all depends on that attitude though like if i was gonna invite somebody out like i would purposely like choose a good route and make it enjoyable and make it more of a fellowship event getting to know me and the guys be out in nature whatever yeah. then i'm gonna break you off and see if you're you're strong enough to to hang that's just kind of a toxic way to look at it and i think i'd rather just go to the gym with somebody and build each other up and if we're talking about actually getting somebody stronger um that's the way i would approach it it, it kind of feels like one of those uh, like i would call it like a gateway activity you know like we used to talk about how smoking the marijuana was a gateway drug <laughs> <laughs> like it's like one of those gateway activities where if you can find somebody who's i mean because if you're if you're consistent about going to the gym and dedicated you know it takes a certain level of uh, passion attitude aggression right i mean like you're lifting weights you're exerting yourself at least as a man like that's you know yeah. it, i would say weightlifting, uh shooting is another one if you're trying to you know, people are people will gravitate towards what they're most interested in and then you will you will develop sort almost by like osmosis you know mm -hmm. like the, the, those those other interests like you know I, I really enjoy shooting i by by proxy now or if it's really by proxy but i i have started to enjoy being you know out in the woods doing you know doing the rucking with you guys right. uh, i guess it's just it's hiking sorry it was yeah we 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 definitely <laughs> there was a hill there was at least one hill so it was hiking uh when you know, yeah 
I can go into that again if you're if people are going to get triggered about that because it's like the buzzword in the community and I was like rucking 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 R rucking for us was a, it's like a road march or you're on a street mm -hmm. for a PT route that like goes around five miles like two and a half down or three down and three back and you're like jogging light poles halfway like doing intervals or 12 13 minute pace and you're moving pretty fast if it's a lighter weight pack like 35 45 pounds uh and you're sweating a ton you're not guys aren't doing pt once a month in the military on on ruck day and they're not fully kitted out with their weapons and ammo like if we're gonna go out to the field and do uh a hike and you can train other things i'm not trying to shit on guys that go out in the woods and do that stuff either it's obviously I don't no know. i mean i don't want to be it, heard wrong no i i mean people if they're upset about it they'll fucking find a way to be upset about it regardless of DM what me on instagram i've done both i've done quite a bit my yeah. fat ass hurt myself last summer doing it too. So yeah, I broke my oh. ankles all the different ways. <sighs> it was my freaking knee, dude. Bum knee. Oh, that was your knee. Oh, I remember. Uh, so it started all. And then when I thought I was getting better, I got too confident that it popped out of place again while we were in Pennsylvania. I do Inside remember the that. camper too. I wasn't even doing anything cool. I was just like, yeah, you were like digging for shit. I stood up off. I went to grab something and I still step. I stepped off on the cooler and my knee just bent in the wrong way. I was like, huh. all right freak the fuck out you're like you <laughs> i didn't freak out but i was like god damn it god like i sat down and held my knee because it almost i like i like dropped my weight a little bit on it like took my weight off of it i guess so i didn't fully hurt myself like the first time but it was going that way and it scared the shit out of me because it's the worst pain i've ever felt in my life besides when you, i really badly rolled may, my ankle in the field one time you may not want to hear it you did freak out i saw your face the look <sighs> on your face that like flushed oh shit look yeah you freak yeah <laughs> You should have seen me in the woods when it actually happened then because that was actual pain. Yeah. That was yeah. that was like it went all the way and yeah. So, I mean, it, and that's the kind of stuff like uh, it potentially happens, right? And it's fine. Like you're an adult. You, you get through it. Like life goes on. Um, yeah. You, won't just, I, you know, and that's, that's the thing. I feel like if you do a good job as like, a, I'll use the, the term mentor, right? Because someone's looking to you for guidance and help, right? Yeah. Um, if that stuff eventually happens, but you did a good job working up to that point, it's just a bump in the road, you know, yep. it, it, cause I do feel like there are the people and I may or may not be related to one of them that is at the first sign of adversity gets like all uppity and pissed off <laughs> and wants to like, just fucking quit training because they insert the reason, you know, Oh, it's, it's too hot out here. There's too many bugs or I didn't like, you know, uh, the, whatever, you know, it could be anything. Uh, so to a degree, and it's, it's, I think the difficult part about growing this community is because while we're talking about this, acknowledging that society as a whole has just gotten a lot softer, you know, it, it people are just, I don't think anybody can argue that for sure. Yeah. I mean, the outdoor activities are basically dying. They're on the decline. Fishing and hunting are not near they're not what they were 70 years ago, 50 years ago, even 20 years ago. You know, those are, those are dying pastimes, which used to be like here in Michigan, deer hunting here. I mean, it's a big deal. Not like mm -hmm. it used to be, but it's, it used to be a real big, people used to come from other States to come here and hunt deer. And you know, people, there's people that they made their whole livelihood off of that going, uh, guiding and stuff for like elk in Northern Michigan and everything. Uh, yeah. and we don't have that anymore. And now, you know, you try to go take a buddy out to go, you know, uh, scout for blinds or, uh, or any of that stuff, go scout for, for deer or go, you know, do baiting. If that's what you're able to do where you're at for whatever you're hunting, um, <clears throat> you bring those friends out that just aren't that able to deal with walking through the week like, without a path or reading a map and a compass. I mean, that's hell, that's an easy way to get somebody out to, Hey, you know what? Take a, a very light backpack, right? Take some snacks. I'm going to take you out in the middle of the woods and we're going to teach you how to read a map and a compass. You know, basic land navigation it can be really fun. You're, you're 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 bringing people into this stuff without really, I mean, without them realizing it. So if you have that one person who has to be involved, somebody's like older child who's just a pain in the ass or something, uh, mm -hmm. you know, or whatever, they're going to be have to take them out there to do it. Majority they, like in basic training and everything, you do classes before they even take you out to conduct land nav. You practice plotting points, and they'll give you a map and a protractor and a compass and say, find this grid. You know, yeah, good luck. That can all that. be done. That can all be done. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, 
school just trying to give ideas but also like yeah. you got to make it engaging i don't know depends on who and yeah. what you're trying to do because if we're talking we kind of started talking about with the the casual friend that just wants to be more prepared somebody mm-hmm. who might not be into all of the stuff that we're into that's a different conversation right. than somebody that maybe already is there and then wants to make the jump into preparedness gear movement team stuff like it, it gets it grows right so it's you almost have to be um, uh that you almost have to be the person if you're trying to mentor right which i think is really important when we're talking about community building uh yeah. or community outreach or whatever whatever title or label you want to put on it you have to be able to read and gauge where people's interest is at <clears throat> and you also have to be able to tell them what they need to hear like mm-hmm. <clears throat> what they need to hear not what you want them to hear like hey man you shoot like shit because your splits aren't where i'm at that may not really actually fucking matter i mean because yeah. that's the kind of stuff that's the kind of feedback you'll get from people online right oh dude you'll never get your splits to sub you know sub whatever time it's like and okay, then proceed to not give you any tips on how to get better exactly yeah. in, the, in the in the big picture are your splits the most important thing i mean it, i guess that depends on your goals but for you the can't first, hit shit they're not exactly and if you can't move, right, we're talking fitness here. If you don't know how to get from one, from point A to point B, it, yeah. you start to, uh, people start to, to form a picture of where their priorities fall and whether yeah. they have that properly aligned or not. So to me anyways, when we talk about preparedness, like I always like to give a more contextual explanation of, of like overall preparedness. People, when they hear the term yeah. prepper, get real weird like i went and uh rightfully so it's got sort of a funniness to it that surrounds the idea of the word yeah bomb shelters and uh and store food stores for 30 years and that movie blast ass with brendan fraser (laughs) you hide in in your bomb shelter and learn french and come out dressed like (laughs) 50s you know it it doesn't have to be that it's more of a lifestyle um and it can be relatively like I don't want to say covert because that's weird, but you can be normal and still do it. <laughs> you, you you won't no no that's not a thing. You can't be normal and do it. That's I mean, I think I get what you're saying, but we also throw around terms like, "Hey, here's my particular flavor of autism," and like <laughs> need to present the night vision, and it's like, okay, yeah, you're a little yeah. weird. That's too much camel form on your handguard, dude. <laughs> yeah, the camel. <laughs> What's that goofy tape for? Well, these guys called um, KBRS Group told me about it. Hashtag knowledge oh, transfer. <laughs> uh, there it is. Um, one thing you were talking about the progression of. Uh, we're talking about the progress, the progression, right? You're not just going to boom start with night vision with somebody. Um, oh, yeah, no. On when we're on the level of the stuff you and I, like we said, are autistic about. Um, okay. When I started training at Blue Water, my buddy from high school invited me out. Um, I was his guest. It was my first time I got the membership like right away. Um, but we were there. I had some of my own stuff cause I had been building up my kit and gear. So I had a battle belt and my, I had just finished my Mark 18. So that was like my first time sighting it in. He had a 365 and a T-Rex sidecar. And that was sort of like what he had to train with. I think he had a rifle that had just sort of like a PSA thing, but like sidecar concealed carry is what he is all he had and then since then got a battle belt got a play Mm -hmm. carrier um has a little sustainment bag now he's asking me about field craft and more survival stuff some small unit tactic stuff are going to get spiced in there it's going to open up some more eventually like you know it's it's cool to see just in over a little over a year that it started with concealed carry now it's at like minute man well, yeah, I mean, it's it, and you kind of, it, it's almost like you kind of got to give people enough of a push to get them started. You gotta let them it, breathe, breathe and think on their yeah. own. And then it's also cool because you're going to see what they, he likes his attachments and stuff set up differently than mine. He's not just a copy paste of me. That's not what I want. I want the, I want you to think for yourself and try things it, that you think you'll like. Isn't it though? Isn't that what we all really want? If we think about well, it. Well, the longer we have shot together, our builds <laughs> look more and more the same. Yeah. I even... <laughs> It we have different like, suppressors, but they're both spray painted quad rails with the same spray paint and pattern, and both with black suppressors. So, and the uh, optic setup, yeah, yeah, it's getting but weird. like some of it's going to rub off, but then also, like, I want guys to think on their own and try things out. And 
like what they like. You like tall optics. I don't. Who cares? We both shoot good. We both me, hit work. But, uh, you know. You're also like twice twice as tall as me. That's <laughs> Maybe, yeah. Uh, and it's it's it, not a scientific know, measurement. When that's, you know, we had a buddy ask, you know, he's like, there's three of us or four of us in our group. And we all just, uh, at that particular time, happen to be running EOTEX, you know, and like we, we like EOTEX. Um, <clears throat> and the other question was, well, should I get, do I need to get one? And it, I mean, the answer is maybe. Do you want one? Yeah. It, it, because here's the thing. Uh, like I know some really good shooters, some dudes who've been operational guys that are full-time law enforcement on teams and stuff now who swear that they'll never run an EOTech again after having done it on a deployment, you know, and cause they had issues with them back in the day. They hate them. They'll never run anything other than like a regular dot. They, they love their aim. Probably a 500 series too. Uh, Just saying. I, I actually don't know. I could probably find out, but I, I mean, but they had a bad experience. That's not to yeah, say that yeah. EOTech is a trash optic. It certainly isn't, but they let their own experiences and, and, you know, uh, an opinion kind of drive how they built out their gear. And if you're going to spend five to $600 on an optic, make sure it's one that you want. Don't just buy it because it, it's what all your buddies have. Like yeah, there's some value in that. If you're talking mm-hmm. about what platforms you're running. So like, yes, we all run nine millimeter Glocks or we all run five, five, six ARs. So then you can share right. ammo magazines. There's certain things that you do want them to yeah. be the same. Like we didn't all, we, we had one guy shoot a 40 as an MP, I don't really care what brand your pistol is. The magazine compatibility is nice, but it's mm-hmm. we can at least all get on the same caliber. That's more important to me. Um, but Glock parts also are awesome. So like, I could have a spare set of Glock parts in my on my workbench. So if anybody ever has issues, I can fix it for them. That's well, and, an appeal. And, and explaining but, and teaching people that uh, rationale too. Like, oh, I'm not just yeah. I'm not just saying you should do this because I love Glock. I mean. We do. We like shooting them for for various reasons, but yeah. here's why we're recommending that you also do this. If you're, tra- are you looking to train with us? Are you looking to be to to build it to be uh, insulated in or built into our overall preparedness plan? You know, because guys are always searching for their you know their group, right? Their network, you know, yeah. for planning. Okay, if that's the case, and you that's that's part of your goal then this is why we ask that you do these things. It, 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 you know, it, in addition to the Glock being a tremendous, you know, handgun that runs really well, performs really well, has a tremendous track record, very accessible list goes on. Right. Yep. But explaining that to people instead of just giving them the, because I said so, Oh, because Lucas Botkins says that it's a great pistol. Like, no, why don't you like to me anyways, that's where you start to actually like hashtag knowledge transfer. You you actually, (laughs) you're able to bring value to what you're telling somebody like, Hey, there's, it's not just because it's my opinion. There's an actual reason and rationale here. We can all run SIGs in 40 caliber. I mean, God, that'd be fucking awful. But like (laughs) in theory, we could do it. And, and, and it would still work the exact same way. Or we could all run 1911s if we were all in our forties and decided. <laughs> I mean, I like a good 1911, but I, I urge. I love it. looking at a 1911 every time since I've started shooting and I've shot one. I'm like, this fucking sucks. Everything about this. I hate. I like shooting, uh, the one, my rock Island, my $400 1911 shoots better than the $800 turn. Terse, Tersus, Tersa, whatever, Tiras uh, brand that Randy was running. Um, and it shoots yeah. better than my buddy's Kimber, or at least more reliably. It's not saying much. Yeah. Yeah. I did. Yeah. That's, and, and helping people navigate some of those. Like, I had a buddy reach out and say, you know, I'm, I gotta, I'm, I gotta get my gun soon. And I'm like, cool. What are you, what are you, what are you thinking? Well, I need to get a handgun. And I just left it at, cool, man. That's awesome. Let me know when you want to go. And we'll go. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I, I'm not going to be blowing up his shit every time I talk to him. Hey man, you want to buy a gun? Hey man, you want to get a gun? Hey, oh, I, I've done that. I, I've made that mistake where I'm I'm sending them a picture of screenshots of gun broker of every striker fired polymer pistol and telling them the differences between an M&P, a Sig, and a Glock. And there's a Walther, and then they're stop. Yeah, yeah they're, they're not. Gonna, cool. They're not going to do it over gun broker. Their first purchase, no. well, likely won't. You're going to take them to like Bass Pro or your local gun shop or whatever. Yeah. And they're going to try a couple. You're safe. And, <clears throat> yeah. I mean, ideally, if someone's trying to make their first, first purchase, right, you'll take them out to the range. Here, you can try this. You can try this. Like, 
it doesn't like you you only own glocks so they're not gonna be able to try anything different i own a good it's easier and one (laughs) mnp you know because that's the thing that's the other thing too there's so much what institutionalized uh like so many institutionalized myths about people buying their first gun. Like you got to go get sized for your gun. It's got to fit your hand. Right. And to an extent, I understand what they're getting at with that. I do, but I also understand that it doesn't really fucking matter. I mean, like you brought up Amy, right. We had Amy on a couple weeks back and she's a tiny five foot tall, uh, you know, woman who's able to shoot a full size Glock 40. Glock in 40 caliber to be, to be clear. Uh, and then there's somebody like me who can shoot a full size Glock in, in 40 and she probably outshoots me. In fact, I would probably be guaranteed that she out, outshoots me. So is, does, it, yeah. is it, is it truly about the gun fitting your hand or is it about, Hey, you might save yourself a week or two off of your like initial learning curve by getting something that quote fits your hand better. Yeah. I think that that was, it's kind of like, you know, how like greeting card companies really invent all these wonderful holidays. We have to spend money on our wives. I feel like the gun industry created the concept of fitting a gun to your hand to drive you to a gun store and to pay to rent eight handguns to only ever, you know, come back to the one. That the you- guys at the gun, the gun counter too are guilty of that because your whole job is to have every gun available and try to sell the right one to the right person. Like when I have every gun in front of me, yeah, you can feel all these out and see which one you like. I would be the worst gun store worker ever because I'd be like, clock, here, take it, bullets. Here's yep. an AR. Don't Go buy shoot. an AK, that's stupid. Don't buy a, <laughs> this, don't buy that pistol. You know what I mean? Like I, I wouldn't be a good gun salesman. Guys, your whole their whole job is to lay out everything and be like, this is different because of this and this and this. Like, I mean, to me though, if you, as long as you have- There's nothing wrong with that. If you have information though to share, I think that's even that's more important. Like, I think the real good gun store people are going to say <clears throat> you should just buy a Glock. But if you want to look at these other things, I'll I'll tell you about them. I'll you know we can talk about it because uh, there's I mean obviously there's people that don't carry Glocks out there. They like Sigs, they like CZs. You know those guys who are into track suits and stuff. They want to build out crazy AK variants and uh, yeah. run CZs, and they think it's great. I think it's weird, but if you're happy, yeah, I'm happy for you. You know, uh, the AK the last guns, the last gun store. <clears throat> I, just, I think they're cool. I just, it's not my country's gun and it's a stupid caliber. PSA is now making them in five, five, six, which is cool. Cause that's the only way I would get into it, but it pisses off um, all the guys, <laughs> which I like even more, but also <laughs> the crink is like an eight inch barrel demo. Ranch just came out with a video of it and it's got the biggest fireball. It looks like you're, uh, your buddy's warden going off at night in broad daylight Mm -hmm. and it's a stupid AK thread pitch. So I can't put like a suppressor on it without a bunch of hoops. It's stupid. Anyways. Oh, what was I to say? Oh, my last gun store uh, interaction was taking a buddy there to buy his Glock. And then the gun store rep going on like a half hour spiel of how he was in the Marine Corps. He was an officer and he knows more than anybody else and then proceeded to try to get him to buy a competition canic over the police trading glock that was like 400 bucks glock 17 and then after the whole spiel he looked at me he almost had the kid sold and or my buddy sold and i was he's like well what would you do and i just like looked at the glock i'm like just buy that he's like okay i bought it and then he or then he got it and then he was glad that he got it like i mean the it, competition it depends on what you're fun. doing it for. It's, it's fun. A- it's just he's this is guy. This is my first pistol ever. It's the only. I want yeah. something that's gonna work, and I'm gonna use it to carry. I'm gonna use it for home defense. I'm gonna do boom Glock 17. You can do it all. Glock 19. You can do it all. Whatever. Yeah, um, and Glock a competition mechanic. That's like so. the length of a. It was the length of like a Glock 34 almost because it had like the yep. built-in comp and stuff. Yep. And I suppose he had a nice trigger. Like I'm sure it shot great. Um, I'm not a fan of Canic, but that's a different argument. I don't really care. Um, but I don't know. That was, that was the last time I went to a gun store after that. I think I bought a, a receiver from there once and I just don't go to gun stores anymore, dude. I, Unless you're looking for something <sighs> specific where you walk in you and go, find deals. Do you have this? And they either say yes or no. And if the answer is yes, yeah. then you buy the part that you're looking for or the firearm you're looking for. Yeah. And th- that's, I mean, that, that is honestly, I think that's probably the biggest holdout in the whole conversation is that that used to be because 
what do you some of the, these like big names tell people? They're like, how do I meet? How do I meet folks? Oh, go sit and hang out at your local gun shop. I'm like, dude, I, I've been to my local gun shop. I, I no, fuck no, a hundred times over, fuck no. I would go there, and, <laughs> you know, obviously, and and they're actually not bad. <clears throat> you know, they have a, a silencer. It's all, you know, they've got yeah. they've got a large selection. They actually started carrying hollow sun pistol dots and stuff, so they're starting to move in a good direction. But it depends like, on where you go, man. Because in Washington, I there was a shop that if I lived close to it, I'd go there all the time just to bullshit with the guys. They're all my age that worked there. They had suppressors, all, yeah. like the tons of arrow stuff in Washington because arrows right uh, next to Tacoma. Mm-hmm. Um, so like tons of build kits, a lot of the AR laws there. I think I talked about early on last year when I started recording with you. Like you couldn't buy a complete AR with an upper and lower without taking like an online class, and then there would be a wait period after you did your forty four seventy three. So all these shops started pushing the the build kits and stuff, and they'll send you sell you a receiver, and you can take it home same day, and then they'll sell you a parts kit, and then they'll assemble it with you and show you how it all goes together, and then boom, you're walking out with an upper and a lower that you just had assembled for you, and you know cheat the system a little bit. Now Washington's completely dead when it comes to gun laws. It's a shame, and I feel like Michigan's on their way, but that's a different conversation for a different episode. Well, we could, yeah, no, we can definitely get into that, but yeah, I mean it's. <clears throat> uh, it, and and that you know the the politicians and the laws and stuff they it's i've had a lot of people asking about that hey i've been thinking about getting a firearm but is this law true you know or people that already own firearms too they want to get more active with it and people's oh well, i'll you know someone tries sh- stealing my car out of my driveway i'll fucking shoot them like dude that's not hell that's, yeah <laughs> that's not what we're doing here man that's not <laughs> that's not what we're what we're talking about it's it's the preservation of life and liberty uh or, or life and and you know uh prevention of uh what what's the the legal term uh of death and grievous bodily injury i think is that is the term that was was coined in the or given to me whatever in in the class i took my uh, subaru was fearing for its life was yours i mean you drive a subaru it's already dead inside. I've been in two collisions with it since I got it six months ago. So, dude, ah, nine months ago. Poor car. Poor thing. Still, still trucking though. Oh no, they're Amazing great. Car. That's yeah. Uh, yeah, they run. They run forever as long as you take care of them. Um, I try. I try my best. <laughs> you know, I, I, I do think that it, we're, we're, we're starting. Whether we, so whether we see it, whether we realize it, whether we embrace it, I, there's more growth here than what I think people are picking up on. Uh, it's in what way do you mean in the ways that there are people who are concerned for what's going on? They're out there buying firearms. <clears throat> and, uh, I know that I know this because I had like somebody's package was delivered to my house on accident and they're like 20 houses down the street and it was from optics. Like, Planet. I was going to say, like, Oh, Midway USA. <laughs> I was like, uh, well, this is interesting. I definitely it. I wonder what's in here. No, I opened it. Um, what was it? It's, I'm, dude, I'm going to get there, man. You got to calm okay, down. Sorry, I'm excited. Sorry, the <laughs> autism spiking. This has been a good it one. Was, you had Whatever I said a minute good. ago, I like didn't have any punctuation in the way I was talking. <laughs> I realized after I took a breath, I'm like, that was way too many words in a two-minute spiel. Jesus Christ. It was, I'm not uh, even drinking. It. it was a Firefield, like 3X, like a not, like a not ACOG, you know? Um, oh. So I was like, yeah, I was like, oh. Well, this is underwhelming. And I just walked it down the street and I think I made up a fib. I was like, oh. You should read uh, a note and it says Trigicon mm-hmm. is 45 minutes away and put their address down. I think I said, well, because I was at the time waiting. I'm like, I was waiting for, I think I ordered two mags, two M&P mags. Oh, okay. Uh, what are the, what's the cheap ass brand? The crap ones you should never buy. Oh, uh, for like metal, metal mags for M&Ps? Yeah. Yeah. I don't even know. I've never looked at the aftermarket like tap or something. What? Yeah, some. I don't know. It was it was those crappy ones that you're never supposed to buy. And I was like, Why'd you buy them? Because I was like, maybe these will be okay. And at the very <laughs> least, if they aren't, I can use them as like dry fire practice mags for lit reloads. Yeah, I mean, you can use them as range mags. It's not a See, big I deal. Can't. At, at worst, they probably because do they the, jam up. No, <laughs> and the, the lips at the top of the magazine like actually bent open, so like I it wouldn't hold a nine millimeter Jesus round Christ. in it. Yeah, it's so shitty. And the For worst two point oh or your one point oh yeah. MP. Yeah, you trying and to shoot that more? Them, uh, this is a while ago. 
that I did. This. Oh, okay. I, sorry. Um, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I actually, uh, that was, I, I ended up warrantying out both of those mags and they both ended up having issues anyway. So I was like, you know what? Forget this. Fuck this. I'm buying a Glock. And I did. And it's been great. Because I've never had any of those kinds of dumbass issues. I've had one magazine that just from pure use at the range and reloading and dry firing and everything, the the follower in the spring, like it just wouldn't lock the slide back anymore. So Chuck, yeah, it'll still feed too. It, it did That's still the cool feed. thing. Like the, the one I had a, a Glock 19 mag that I put the extension in without changing the spring. So sometimes it won't lock back. I think most of that early on was my grip actually causing malfunctions, not the mag. Um, but the damn thing still feeds just fine. So far, I haven't had a single Glock mag die, mainly around the P mags and a couple beater Glock 17 mags at the range that I don't even clean them. (laughs) I hate taking Glock mags apart. So if it were to get so dirty, I guess I would eventually do it or I just keep buying more mags because they're everywhere. See, and that's those are the kinds of things that I like, like. I like hearing those and the, the stories I like to, to be able to share with people when they ask me, what should I buy? And <clears throat> I had a friend that was like, oh, I'm not buying a Glock. It's fucking hideous. I'm like, well, it's half the price of this HK that you're looking to buy, um, which, yeah. by the way, he, he did end up buying the, the HK uh, VP9 because he just what he, he had to have it. Uh, I go, well, yeah. here's the thing. Um, they run forever. The parts are everywhere. And like, you can tell those stories like, Hey, even after the parts wear out or the mags wear out, they still function. They just don't function all the way, but they're, they're going to do what they need to do. And yep. it, it, it at least lends itself to, to demonstrate that like, Hey, these are good. You should do this for these reasons. You can at least try to help people make a more informed decision. Uh, it, Cause we're buying these. I mean, let's just say it for what it is, right? For self defense, potentially yeah. to carry the firearm on your person. Uh, I want to know that, regardless of how pretty it looks, and I actually happen to like the Glock aesthetic personally. I was going to say a lot of us do, and I, I'll let you finish before I go on my yeah. little spiel. But I was going to talk about that. I just, I mean, like, it, regardless of how pretty it is, it's a tool, and I want it to work. Yeah. I want it to work yep. every time. It doesn't have to be and nice. Pretty looking thing. I, I actually appreciate when it looks a little bit beat to shit. Yeah, both my slides are the an, uh, the anodize. It's not, is it anodizing? I what kind of finish they put on the slides. I, I tried. I think it's I tried. They're both all worn out on the corners now. It makes me happy to look at. Um, yeah, you can get that. But I was going to say, I feel like it's generational. You can get that battle worn. Yeah. Oh God. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> I feel like it's generational. Because the guys that were around when the Glock came out all say it looks like shit. Um, um, yeah. The Gen then, 1. I mean, yeah. I feel like, uh, you know, you're the millennial generation. I feel like it's hit and miss. Some guys really hate it. Some guys don't. Pretty much everybody my age that I've talked to and guys my brother's age, like younger, um, we're technically still in the same generation, but he's younger. Like the gamer generation, uh, yeah. at least in my generation, me and uh, Jacob, you know, big iron boys, um, <laughs> we grew up playing World War II games. So it was always 1911 luger freaking like world war ii guns you know and then yeah. when the modern game started coming out it was glocks berettas sigs like the 226 the 226 mm-hmm. was my favorite for a long time when i started playing battlefield but the freaking glock dude they had the glock 18 like that was the modern pistol as in my teen years thinking about the way guns are changing watching the yeah. matrix with the freaking berettas and desert eagles whatever so by the time you know you're old enough to start getting the real thing I wanted a Glock because it was cool to me. And then thankfully, like it's, you know, it's kind of, it's been the standard for decades now. Um, and we have all the pros that we talk about, but, and my brother is younger than me. He's old enough. Once he starts living on his own, he's going to get his own pistol. I'm like, what do you think you're going to want? And he's like a Glock. Cause it's, it's cool and they just work and it's easy. That's it, what he knows. It's what he's trained. Yeah. With. It's, um, yeah. that's the story of a lot of gamers that are now becoming gun owners. It's the freaking regular AR set up with a red dot and a flashlight and a Glock. They don't, you don't have to play the game anymore. Like I almost bought a Mini 14 when I started, and I'm Oof. I'm glad I didn't. <laughs> and, yeah, right. Yeah. Like it's yeah. like you don't see those at all anymore. Um, because I liked World War II and I, I didn't want all the fancy attachments. I was a little fuddy. Like it's still you know it looks it looks cool. Kind of looks like the old M14 style, whatever. Um, but it has some of the attributes of an AR, even though they have stupid proprietary mags. And I'm so glad I didn't go with that. I would yeah. like to eventually get one, but they've gone up in price so much since I first started looking that it, it hurts me to look at. They're like f- going for like fifteen hundred bucks now or something crazy. Yeah, it was it's like seven hundred. Last time I looked was like fourteen hundred dollars. I think it's and that's insane. The, 
twice of what it was when I saw them. I almost bought one in Walmart, brand new, when I was 18, because um, Walmart would sell me guns at the time at 18. But then I think when I was 19, they stopped selling guns to me or ammo completely. Walmart changed what they were doing. Yep. Yep. Anyways, they shifted policy. Anyways, yeah. And like one day, the guy was like, I can't sell you this. And he looked at me like I was about to go do something terrible. Like I was like, <laughs> I was like, okay, dude, bye. I'm going to go to support my local gun shop. But yeah. yeah, it was like seven, seven fifty or something for a mini 14 ranch base model. And uh, yeah, they're like double that now, but freaking gamer kids, dude, they know what they like. And uh, it makes, it's cool to see how the culture has shifted there. It That's been a huge part of it. Uh, honestly, I think that's pushed a lot of really people big part of ownership. It. And what do you think guys uh, are trying to ban violent video games and airsoft? Certain countries have been trying to ban banning airsoft. They've been trying to ban the video games since or since video games started. Yeah, the mid '90s. Well, since you got your basically since the inception of the first person shooter. Uh, yeah. and really, I think I remember when uh, <clears throat> that was something that was pointed out when Columbine happened. Uh, yeah. It was directed back to if I'm well, if I'm recalling correctly, it was. Uh, like aggressive music, metal music, and uh, and violent <laughs> video games were were two really really big rap music. Yeah, well, now at the time it was metal because rap wasn't it didn't pick up. Now it is. Now gotcha. it, yeah yeah. It's not, it's not that shit's so fucking annoying. Talking about it, you know, Glocks and choppers and shit, and I'm like, <laughs> man, I have no fucking clue. That's like when I uh, when I have friends that really don't know what they're talking about, and they 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 drop that shit on me, and I'm like. Mm. <laughs> can we be real for a second because <laughs> uh you're triggering my autism and uh, i i don't like it <laughs> um, but like i said you know to, to kind of wrap it here and like bring it all to back to the really to we definitely point. went all over yeah but i mean there it, I, I mean that's fine it, it, it's i think it's it's something that you can't pinpoint with one thing and yeah. there's a lot to talk about i think it's important to acknowledge all of it i think it's important that if you're listening to this, it's likely because you're somebody who's already in this particular lifestyle or interested in these things. And you probably more than likely have friends and family that are asking you these things. And it's important to not be one of the people that actually wants to keep the the community small, wants to be a gatekeeper, wants to close things off. You know, you actually want less people here because you, for whatever reason, uh, and I I see this a lot with with the musicians I teach and stuff. People forget what it was like when they were learning. People forget what they were like when they didn't know shit about shit, couldn't shoot straight, didn't know how to do a reload, and yeah. you know thought that uh, the Ruger uh, SR9 compact was the gun that they definitely wanted. That that was yeah. me. I thought that gun was for sure what I needed. I watched one like the. Uh, Iraq veteran 8888 videos Hell yeah. about that. and uh, with the, the old gentleman with the, the big long beard before he passed away. <clears throat> I remember watching those and I was like, that seems like a great affordable firearm for me. It's not, it's not what I got. I never owned one. Uh, thank God. I'll never own a Ruger as long as I live. Unless it's last a, thing I'll say, but uh, I'll drop one little bombshell, just a little, 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 little drone hand grenade in this conversation at the end. Oh boy. Um, the guys that are saying the Second Amendment is not for everybody are the same guys that are saying it's a God-given right. Yeah, it's just depending on who they're talking about when they're saying it. Yeah. When it's a God-given right so if you wanna, for them. <laughs> yeah, so if you want to see some change mm-hmm. and be a positive influence on the people around you, uh, check your ego. Yeah, no, seriously. I mean, there are great people out there that just need a little help and guidance. Like, we, yeah. Yeah, we all sucked at one point, and... Here, and, and here's the thing, and this is what I was saying to begin with, <clears throat> whether we realize it and are paying attention or not, the community is growing. Gun yeah. ownership is growing. So you're, you make the choice. Is it, is it going to grow in the positive ways you want to see with more capable and competent gun owners who are concealed carrying, using good holsters, carrying with quality optics and shit like that? Or do you want to see more of the FUDs that you bitch about online all the time? Because without any guidance right. and without anybody sitting there and you know slapping them on the hand going, no. Don't do that dumb shit. Buy a good holster, buy a quality gun, buy a good light. You know, don't listen to Ken Hackathorn telling you that you're going to have a a no dick by carrying appendix, you know, or or a Mm -hmm. decock or whatever the fuck stupid ass joke that he made. You know, uh, (laughs) like don't listen to those guys. And despite what ever, like your dad and your grandpa would tell you, you know, don't listen to Ken Hackathorn. Listen to the people who are actually out here doing this shit now. And like, you know, 
be the the voice of reason for your friends. Be that that guiding. I don't say guiding light because that sounds so biblical, <laughs> but but really be that guide for your friends because it sounds like a little too high horse. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it does. Uh, you should also. I was. I've been. I was sort of thinking about this today, listening to another podcast. Um, like I'm guilty of making fun of fuds and maybe even bitching about that side of the community that isn't being helpful. But how helpful am I being by bitching about it? Like I was kind of convicted to maybe go to the at our local range the events that they hold are free for members to just go and watch so maybe i go to the um the high power service rifle day and just go talk to some of the old guys are there that are really passionate about their antique guns their serve their springfields their among grands like the their long range days you'll see guys with ars and guys with old bolt guns like I can still have a conversation and meet the guys in my community that way. And it doesn't have to be the people that we completely align with. And there's a lot of, there's decades of maturity and growth that can come from those guys that maybe don't, aren't into anything other than a 1911 and a leather holster and their bolt gun. But yeah. like you're talking, you're talking about making change and like in a positive way, I think there's still a lot of community that can come from that. And maybe that's how you actually see changes in your local range as if you're a face that is constantly showing up and the the guys who run the range know you. Like maybe you're eventually part of the board and you're able to in, bring in some low light days or night vision stuff. You yeah. know what I mean? How are we just going to keep bitching about it and but never go to our local range besides our bays by ourselves and expect anything to change? Yeah, I mean, you have to you have to be involved to some degree. Yeah. You know, I it, just, that it, hit me today on the way home from work. Like I kind of yeah. want to just, we get the newsletter every month. I kind of <laughs> just want to pick one event and just go and just meet some people. Dude, as long you as know. it's not the muzzle loader, I'm not wearing a animal. Hey, <laughs> other in my hat. And yeah. Yeah. I don't know. There with the old guys talking about how much my wife annoys me. Uh, I draw yeah. the line here, but the three yeah. gun practice days are free for anybody. You don't have to shoot a competition to go to the three gun practice matches. They do it on Thursday nights or something. I heard them. When I went to the suppressor video that I made, I was it was on a Thursday night and I heard the three gun guys like practicing and some dudes were burning it down. It sounded like with pistol, like really fast doubles. And I was like, damn, I, I kind of wish I would have just walked over. So one of these one of these weeknights, I might try to just peek around and uh, see yep. if I can meet some people. And it really know? is. It really is, you know, that easy for you guys that you don't know. Go to your local gun shop, go to your local gun range. I mean, you might be surprised at who you meet and. Like one of the most impressionable uh, or yeah, impressionable experiences I ever had was at my local indoor range on a Tuesday when nobody was there shooting, mm-hmm. and the range the range officer was a former Marine and former firearms instructor, and he was the one, and I never saw the guy again, unfortunately, but that one day he like extended my like my the the trolley or whatever for the the paper the target whatever came in because my half hour was up. And yep. he was helping me diagnose my trigger pulse. He goes, oh, it's okay. There's nobody else in here. You're fine. And literally just like throws the thing back down the track. He's like, oh, I'll go back <laughs> there and get it later. It's fine. And he let me shoot for like an extra 45 minutes that I didn't pay for nice. helping me diagnose trigger pull and and grip and stuff. And like, I didn't know that's what that was going to happen that day when I walked in there. I just that's knew awesome. I was going to go in there and, and work on, you know, accuracy and stuff. So, uh, And that interaction has stuck with you years yep. later. Yep. So that's really cool. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Thanks for sharing that. That's that's a good story. Yeah, I only got one or two, so I gotta I gotta (laughs) drop them in there when they count. So well, I know I've regurgitated the same story like three or four times in the last year that I've been recording with you. So that's nice to hear. (laughs) A new one, a good one. Yeah, I mean it's it. it, Hey, you know what? Use them where use them where you can. You know, Uh, that's what old as you get older. It's it's pretty much how it works. So, but uh, yeah things are changing and guys we need to kind of we need to embrace it we need to respond and react to it and we need to this this is really how how we feel we need to help grow the community you know it's something that we talk about a lot here on this podcast it's it's something that a lot of people talk about in our community in general it's a very popular uh, notion, <clears throat> right? To to bring people into this uh, community and and welcome to this sort of lifestyle and teach them this mindset and all of these things that we talk about here on this podcast. It's 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 something that you see a lot of people talk about. It's not just us, certainly not just us. Uh, but you also then do see a lot of people who 
despite what they'll say and what they'll preach and what they'll be critical of, to, you know, outwardly, they gatekeep. <clears throat> and I, I genuinely do think that if we want our gun rights to to be preserved and to, uh, I mean, let's be honest, if we want them to grow or to be restored, I should say, to the levels which they were about 100 years ago, right? We need more gun owners. We need educated gun owners. And we need rational and reasonable gun owners, to at least to some moderate extent, right? It is not, uh, it's no longer feasible to retreat to our own community and close ourselves, you know, off from the world and uh, dissuade people, you know, hey, if you make it here on your own, good for you. You made the trek. You're one of the few. Uh, but otherwise, you know, screw you. Go shoot at the range with your your girlfriend and don't bother us because you're not about it. There needs to at least, I think, be some kind of effort uh, because, like, like I said, and you guys, you can look at the numbers. You can look at the metrics. Everything points to aggressive growth. So either we're going to help nourish that and inform people and really open up the community. There is space here. There really is. So not everybody has to be somebody who's super into all of the training and, you know, getting out in the woods and, and living out, living off the grid for three days at a time and going rucking and overnighting with night vision and gear and kit and learning comms. I mean, there are plenty of people out there that are just, they're very into com- competitive shooting. That's what they're really into. There's people who are into defensive shooting only. They want to be capable enough to be, uh, you, you know, a defender of their own life and their family's safety. And, but they don't, they don't, you know, necessarily find that they need to be out there pushing those limits and boundaries. And while we can have personal disagreements on that, Hey, I, I think you should, I think you should push your limits. I think you should learn more. I think you should do more. You should get into this. You should get into that. As long as you're competent and you're effective with what you're doing, I'm okay with you, you know, your self-imposed limitations on where you can spend your money, spend your time and place your attention and energy. I I get it. We you know, it takes all kinds to make the world turn. But that I keep coming back to this original point that our community is growing. More people are coming in and it it doesn't necessarily have to just be all about gun ownership. A lot of this comes back to gun ownership because that's pretty much the tool by which we defend our own liberties and freedoms these days, but it can be a lot of things, right? The preparedness space is very wide. It's very vast. And you'll find a lot of people who are actually just into being more self-efficient and personally accountable in their lifestyles. They garden, they, they do for themselves. They don't, you know, go out and just pay somebody to fix a leaky pipe. They will go ahead and, you know, go grab some shark fittings and a length of pipe and they'll go uh, swap that section out themselves, or they'll do a remodel project in their basement, or they'll, you know, remodel their bathroom themselves. There's, there's different levels to this. There's different considerations. It's not the same for everybody. Uh, and <clears throat> that's also to point out that just because you are handy with a firearm does not mean that you can do any of the other things I just mentioned. Nobody does it all. And that's, in, that, that's, that's the importance behind having a well-rounded network, a good, uh, well-connected group of people that you can lean on and can depend on. Maybe somebody in your group who's just a really good cook. They don't shoot very well, although they can shoot. They don't have all the skills everybody else does, but they know about how to cook food, how to prepare food store food, what you can and can't do to safely, you know, plan for weeks and weeks of, of nourishment and things like that, you know, which how, how to spot when poultry or pork or ha- or whatever, you know, like when any of that stuff has gone bad, those are all that those knowledge, those pieces of knowledge and skills and things like that, those all have relevance in the discussion. Uh, but we are seeing more people move towards this lifestyle. People that are sick of kind of living off the government, sick of being told uh, that the way things have gone the last four years are the right way. Uh, it, it's and I don't and that's not to make it political, but we've been going a certain direction as a society, and a lot of people are quite frankly fed up with you know dangerous uh, danger on the streets. The the border, you know, especially you live towards the border and you have all these people coming in and these awful crimes and things. We're going to be more prepared. We're going to defend ourselves. We're going to learn these other skill sets. We're going to teach our kids how to be better prepared. We're going to make sure this stuff never happens. Or maybe it's just, I don't know, the video game culture. It, it, it could be a lot of things. But again, all of this to say, the growth is happening. Either we can be a positive 
influence and and help direct and nourish this growth or we can sit by and we can potentially waste it and see ourselves uh you know in the next five to ten years here lose that growth and end up exactly where we're sitting today where to be completely frank with you we're on the precipice of losing a lot of gun rights and a lot of precious 2a freedoms that a lot of people hold very dear so uh hopefully you guys enjoyed this and got something out of it um <clears throat> it's certainly something that we need to talk about more and actually beyond talking about need to act on more and we, we threw some stuff out there josh and i certainly aren't always the best examples of those things we're human we've got other stuff going on families and stuff like that but uh hopefully this sparks some interest and in, in things you know maybe if you're somebody who has the knowledge go put on a class somewhere you know go give go give a basic first aid kit or first aid class i should say if you have that knowledge and are willing to share that information with people, that's a great starting point. A lot of people are just interested in getting a first aid certification and that can open a door or take people lifting with you at the gym or working out at the gym. Talk about fitness. Talk about why it's important. These are things that are first steps in in getting all of all of these people in more involved in the conversation. It doesn't always just have to be about pushing splits and fast draw times and pars and drills and you know, uh, $800 optics. So I, I do, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you guys got something out of it. These are the kinds of conversations that, you know, I kind of enjoy when, when Josh and I are able to sit down and just talk together and bring you guys some, some genuine thoughts. Uh, and, but that's all I got for this week, folks. Uh, really, I, I truly appreciate you guys hanging out, listening to us. If, if you haven't already, make sure you guys smash that subscribe button. Uh, every every bit helps, man, as we are continuing to climb through the year. We got some pretty lofty goals for where we want to see some things by by year end. So doing everything we can to make sure that we, we push the good messages and do everything we can to earn your guys' support. Until next week, you guys be safe out there. And like we always say, work hard, train smarter, and be prepared. 